Hello, my name is Graham Morrison and I'm on the team at Linux Voice, a new kind of Linux and free software magazine, uh, one that we successfully crowdfunded on Indiegogo at the end of uh, 2013 and one where we're going to give back all of our content for free after nine months or before, plus 50% of any profits we make go back to the projects that the Linux and free software communities choose through our magazine. The first issue of Linux Voice is actually due out on the 27th of February. Uh, and you can find out more about that at uh, linuxvoice.com or you can buy subscriptions uh, at shop.linuxvoice.com. One thing we'd like to be is as inclusive as possible. And that includes, we hope, bringing people to bringing new people to Linux and free software. Um, but we also recognize that there's something of a learning curve in getting started with Linux, um, especially if you're coming from uh, a Windows background or perhaps you've used OS X, Apple's OS X. Um, and we think the best way of addressing this learning curve is with a short series of videos that take you from complete newbie to someone who has a much better idea about what Linux is, how everything works and how to get the most from it. So this is the first video in a short series of tutorial videos that will hopefully give you all of that background information and get you started on what is a fantastic, brilliant, fun, wonderful, exciting adventure. Right, so let's get started. Um, here is Linux. It's a, this is a normal desktop Linux running on a PC with a screen or with a keyboard um, um, with a mouse, um, which really begs the question, what is Linux? Well, Linux is an operating system. It's what turns all of the various components that go into your computer into something functional, into something that does things for you. There's an awful lot of complexity that goes into what are computers. In essence, um, the operating system manages things like your storage. It manages your file system. Um, it manages the memory. It manages all of the things that are running on your computer. And we can actually take a look at that. There's um, an application called System Monitor. Here on Linux, you can find the same thing on Windows um, and on OS X. Um, here's the file system, for example. Um, we've got a, a CD drive mounted and we've also got the main file system. This is it, 8 gigabytes. Um, Clicking to the Processes tab, these are all the things that are running on this version of Linux at this time. You can see the CPU is the amount of the processor each of those processes is taking up. Um, you can see this in a pretty chart, but uh, as soon as I switch to this view, the CPU resources go right up. You can see there it's taking a lot of time. So the operating system is managing all of this. It's managing the files. It's managing the memory. It's managing the network as well. Um, that's what an operating system is. Um, Linux is obviously found on desktops, on PCs, but you can also find it in Android, the mobile phone, the smartphone platform started by Google. Android is Linux as well. Um, and while it doesn't have the same appearance, the heart of what it is is the same as this. Um, and that is the Linux kernel. That's where the operating system takes its name. In fact, the only part of Linux that is Linux is something called the kernel. And the kernel was created by this guy, Linus Torvalds. That's why the operating system is called Linux. He called it Linux from his own name. Um, and he started working on the kernel back in the early 90s. Um, the kernel is here. In fact, I've got the latest version of the kernel straight off the Linux Voice DVD. And so all those things that we were just talking about, the file system, the processes, um, the drivers as well for your hardware, such as your USB drivers or your graphics card drivers, they're all here. Um, this is the source code of the kernel. So this is what programmers like Linus Torvalds do. They spend their time writing things um, in a programming language normally called C, um, normally C for the kernel, 
um, although other operating systems sometimes use other languages. Um, and so if you actually look at the source code, this is incredibly complex. 99.9% .9 of us can't don't have any comprehension of what any of this stuff is actually doing. But just to provide some context, um, I could see here, you can open up the FireWire folder. This is the code that goes into making FireWire devices work on Linux. And this is what the kernel does. It's the think of it like the kernel of a nut. It's the part that manages everything else and everything else sits on top of the Linux kernel. And you can find the Linux kernel in Android. You can find it here on our desktop. You can find it running in the servers that drive Google and Facebook and Twitter. You can find it in set top boxes, um, recording your television when you're away on holiday. Um, you can find it in things like the Raspberry Pi. It's incredibly flexible, secure, and versatile. And that's what's made it such a great success. The other aspect of Linux that's made it such a big success is that it's open source. And that means that anybody can take a copy of the kernel of this and adapt it, modify it, and release it. They don't need to ask for permission. All they need to do, in fact, is make their own modifications available for free in the same way. And that is thanks to the license under which Linux is released, and it's called the GPL. That's the GNU General Public License. Now you can see here that the, the kernel is uh, released using version 2 of the uh, GNU General Public License, um, but there's also a version 3 which is uh, widely used as well. And we can explain a little bit about GNU. GNU is thanks to this guy, Richard Stallman. Now Richard Stallman, um, incredibly clever, a great visionary. Um, in the 80s, he created the GPL and created the an environment of uh, sharing now, this sharing is actually much closer to the way that academics uh, share information with one another um, to move insight forwards. Um, and in fact, uh, Richard Stallman was uh, working at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, back in the 70s, uh, when he started to formulate these ideas of, of sharing that he formalized into the GPL. Um, and he calls software that adheres to his beliefs in sharing and the GPL free software, free as in free speech. Um, a lot of us also use the term open source for the same thing, but uh, Richard Stallman doesn't agree with that. He, he says there's an important distinction to be made between the two. So free software and the GPL, the idea of sharing and building on the work of others is, is what Linux is about to create the best possible solution. Um, in fact, using another piece of open source software, I've got the GPL version 2 open up here in LibreOffice, which is a free office suite. And if we skip down here um, to the bit that I've highlighted, you may copy and distribute the program um, in object or executable form under the terms of sections 1 and 2 above. And these sections allow you to modify your copy and other copies. The rights of copying and giving copies freely to other people are enshrined in the whole system. And an important part of that is that you have to share the parts that you change with everybody else. So it keeps evolving, it keeps getting stronger. And having started in the early 90s, that's exactly what happened. So the kernel, in fact, the need, needs an awful lot more um, to, to create a functioning operating system. Um, and Richard Stallman, he in the early 80s, before before the kernel, in fact, he created um, the compiler, a compiler called GCC. And a compiler is what pulls together all of this source code and turns it actually into instructions that your computer or your device can understand. If you look here in Arch, which is architecture, you can see all the architectures supported by the main kernel source tree. Um, so down here, x86. That's what I'm running on here. It's a normal PC. But you can see a whole 
history of, of CPUs, MIPS, um, Spark, remember those big um, servers back in the 90s? Um, you'll find M68 and Motorola 68000s, M68K, um, and many other besides. Um, ARM is obviously, um, it's becoming more and more significant. Um, you find it in many smartphones in the Raspberry Pi. Um, so the compiler being freely available and freely usable by Linus Torvalds allowed him to start writing code and, and allows anybody who can understand code to create their own. And to give you some um, idea of what programming involves, I'll, I'll write the simplest program you possibly can um, using the C programming language, which is the same one used for the uh, Linux kernel. Um, I'll just create a folder. Uh, hello. Um, I'm back. I've opened up a command line there, which is something that terrifies a lot of Linux users, but you can use Linux for years without ever having to open it. But if you do, it's, it's a wonderful portal on a new world. There I typed in a command, make dir hello, change directory to hello. Um, and then I'm going to type nano, which is the name of a text editor. And then hello.c. I'm calling it a C file because I'm going to be writing it uh, using C. Um, and then hash include... Uh, standard io.h don't have to worry about this at all this is just to give you some idea of um, what programming is like and and while it can be difficult um, there's a lot you can do um, without being a master of of any language um, and there are in fact contributions you can make to the Linux kernel um, and to many projects in general without um, whoops <laughs> I, uh, I thought that was a different uh, text editor then without being a genius programmer so I just created that simple text file uh, GCC is Richard Stallman's uh, compiler hello.c I take that as an input and I create an object file from the output. It's already created it. If I ls, that's the same as dir, I've created hello. And I can run it just like that. You see? Hello Linux voice. Um, that's a simple C program, just the same as the C programs written in the kernel. So Linux is free because anybody can change it um, and you can share your changes with anybody else. That's the freedom aspect. It's free, of course, as a side effect of that. Um, but that's not the central characteristic of Linux for many of us. It's mostly the freedom. And it's also incredibly intertwined with the GPL. Um, the GPL is the license used for the source code, and it's what's used to license much of the software that makes the whole operating system. There's the compiler that we looked at, but there's also very important libraries and, and applications. And that's why many people, uh, Richard Storman included, prefer to call the entire operating system GNU slash Linux uh, to give some recognition to the vast number of tools that are using the GNU uh, general public license as well as the kernel. And it's also what makes Linux different. Um, you can't see the source code to Microsoft Windows and you can't see the source code to OS X. Um, and increasingly, as if you wanted to develop or change things within those operating systems, you have to adhere to strict licenses and strict terms for how you share the code and how you publish the code. If you think of Apple's App Store or the way that Microsoft would like its own application store to work, um, there are rules governing what your program can do and how it shares data. Um, and this is what makes Linux different. Um, and what a great many of us feel makes it worth investing your time in. It's not going to change um, just to satisfy some upgrade business model. Um, and if it does change, you're free to stay using the old system with security updates for as long as you want to. Um, many old versions of Linux still run. So that's Linux in a nutshell, in a kernel. Um, that's what makes it different. Um, 
That's why it's such a wonderful operating system. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to install Linux. I'm going to show you how to install Linux Mint, which is this derivative of Linux we're running here. And I'll explain a little bit more about what makes derivatives, why there are so many of them, and how they differ um, to operating systems you may be used to. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to check out linuxvoice.com. Uh, and you may now be interested in a fortnightly podcast we do, uh, which is at the same link. And of course, you can buy Linux Voice, the magazine at shop.linuxvoice.com. Um, see you next time. Thank you. Bye.